Shalom, Shalom family, and welcome to our channel, Manna for Battle, where we literally eat spiritual food provided by Yahuwah. And if the food you're eating doesn't look right, doesn't smell right, or doesn't taste right, then most likely you're eating at the wrong table. Join us and eat the spiritual manna straight from Yahuwah that will nourish your earthly body, lead you to Yeshua, who will take you straight to the Heavenly Father and your celestial one. Now let's prepare for battle. Shalom family and welcome to our channel. Some of the many wiles of the devil were to separate the daughters of Zion from biblical history, divide us from our men, and lower our value, esteem, and positions. We must give all honor and glory to the Most High, who sent His Holy Spirit to remind us of these matters and elevate our foremothers back to their original positions, which is side by side with the forefathers of Zion. All praises to the Most High Power. Now let me share with you what I found in the Book of Remembrance mentioned in Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. First Aki chapter 6 verse 1 through 12. We find our foremother Dowd. She is the mother of King Josiah, but is known as Jedediah in our Bible. Let's learn more about her as we summarize these verses for time's sake. Dowd's parents changed her name to Jedediah to hide her purpose and her vision from the wicked. The angels were heard singing at her birth because her vision was to cleanse Israel with a mighty cleansing. Dowd was a fair and righteous maiden, and her beauty was recognized by King Manasseh. As he passed by her, he was on his way to perform all types of wickedness through sorcery, and he commanded his men to grab Dowd that she might become his wife. She was sorely afraid. If one was not aware, King Manasseh committed human sacrifices upon the altars. But the Most High comforted her, and he said, Daughter, fear not, yield unto this king. I have a great purpose for you. You will perform a great work in Israel, bringing forth a son who shall rule Israel in righteousness, preparing the way before me. Do not indulge in the sins of the king and walk in holiness towards me, and you shall be called great by the host of heaven. Dowd conceived and bore a child into the house of David named Josiah, whose name means founded by Yah. Dowd was gifted with discretion and taught Josiah to hate the works of darkness committed by his father and to love the ways of the Most High. Dowd's skill and discretion were so great, Manessa never knew of her works, not even from young Josiah who was four years old when his father died. Now that's amazing, because four-year-olds will drop a dime on their parents in a minute. But let's continue. Josiah became king at eight years old, and his chief counselor was his mother. And by the hand of his mother, his house became known as the court of children. His scribe was Ahakam, twelve years old, the son of Shaphan. His steward was Ashaya, 14 years old. His herald was Akbar, 10 years old. And his prophets, Jeremiah, Lehi, and Ishmael were all youths. And Ishmael, not Hagar's son, was the oldest, being 22 years old. But wait, where have we heard the name Lehi from? Hmm... His name was Elisha before the Most High appeared to him in a pillar of fire and changed his name to Lehi. He was a prophet the Most High led here to the Promised Land, America, and his son Nephi recorded his works in the Book of Mormon, which we know as the Second Stick. See the connection? I pray so. But let's continue. In the days of Manasseh, he had a wicked high priest a sorcerer named Shalom, 
Wait, is that the same Shalom married to the prophetess Holda? We will search that matter out in another lesson, but back to the battle. Daud counseled Josiah to replace Shalom with Hilkiah, as it was the Most High's desire to place him as a high priest, a priest of Melchizedek. The court of children was established, and all their mothers were their chief counselors. When Josiah was 26 years old, he determined he would repair the house of the Most High, and under the altar was found the Book of the Law. When he read it, he tore his garments, weeping in great sorrow as he learned the nation was not keeping the law of righteousness, but the law of Babylon inherited from Aaron. Uh oh. Weeping and praying for forgiveness to the Father, he realized the nation failed to stand with the Messiah in love to establish the Most High's kingdom. Sound familiar? Fear overtook him because he understood their nation had become a nation of base wickedness and the people did not abide in the law of virtue. He called a council with Hilkiah, Shaphan, and their mothers, and they counseled him to seek out and inquire by the mouth of a prophetess if there was an opportunity to cleanse Israel. And we all know that prophetess was Holda, wife of Shalom. Family, we are out of time. Stay strong in the Most High through faith, love, prayer, and repentance. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is just manna for thought. Shalom, family, and thank you. Family, I pray this lesson has edified your soul and spirit and brings you peace. Always, always, always seek Yah first and pray without ceasing. Remember, John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. But the hour cometh, and now it is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. And be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of my next video. Thank you.